What's up guys, this is Carl from the Unboxing Bros and today we're going to talk about Quasar. So where and when did Quasar first appear? Wendell Vaux or Quasar was actually Marvel Man and appeared in Captain America number 217, released in January 1978. He continued to appear in Captain America, The Incredible Hulk, Marvel 2-in-1, and The Avengers series. He was revamped as Quasar by Mark Greenwald and was relaunched in The Incredible Hulk Volume 1 in 1962. So how did he become Quasar? Wendell Vaughn served in the US Army where he became a lieutenant. After that, he applied to SHIELD Academy and graduated with full honors. Unfortunately, he did not have the so-called killer instincts, so he wasn't qualified to be a field agent. Later, Wendell worked as a guard at a Stark International project which studies quantum bonds, which were unique energy manipulating devices with incredible power. The cosmic being Eon gave the quantum bonds to beings who would become protectors of the universe. Aside from being weapons, the bond symbolizes the stations of the protectors. One day, Wendell was watching William Wesley field test these bonds. Wesley panicked when the bonds would not come off and as a result disintegrated himself. Later, androids from the criminal organization, AIM, for advanced idea mechanics, tried to steal the alien energy bonds. To protect the bonds, Wendell had no choice but to wear them. Despite being underestimated earlier because he lacked the so-called killer instinct, he still managed to repulse the AIM invasion. Ironically, it was this very lacking that made him succeed in being able to control the rampant energies he unleashed using the quantum bonds. So what is his personality? What motivates Quasar? Based on the principles of the quantum bonds, one can conclude that Wendell had all the requirements to become the new protector of the universe, which was the role of the late Captain Marvel. Quasar is intelligent, courageous, and resourceful. Despite having the smarts, Quasar isn't arrogant. He is almost always eager and polite, even in combat. He's so diplomatic that he'll try to end any conflicts as peacefully as possible. Overall, he gives the impression of a Silver Age hero right from the get-go. For those who don't know it yet, the Silver Age is a term for the age of comic books from 1957 to 1973. This is a period of time where the greats were born. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel, and Captain America. Now going back to Quasar, despite coming across as upbeat and helpful, he experiences self-esteem issues. He struggles with his confidence, specifically over his role as the new protector, but his self-doubt has been existing even before he came across the quantum bonds. It all started when he felt like he failed twice as a former security chief of Project Pegasus. The project had nearly been destroyed by the space engulfing Anthman. If it weren't for the combined forces of several superheroes like Thundra, Thing, Aquarian, and himself. Yet again, another major disaster almost happened after the Serpent Crown has been bought into the facility for safekeeping. It later possessed the minds of the workers there, as well as overpowering their wills. In their possessed state, they have started transporting other Serpent Crowns from alternate dimensions to the facility to begin Seth's return to Earth. Seth is by the way an evil elder god mystically tied to the ancient artifact, Serpent Crown. Although they were saved and Seth's plan was stopped by Spider-Man and others, Wendell felt that he failed again in securing the project. He felt like he was being negligent in his duty. Feeling down in the dumps, as his father suggested, he went on a soul-searching trip to Uranus and learned about the origins of the quantum bonds. Even there, he almost got succumbed to death urges manipulation. The latter tried to convince Quasar that he should end his life because of his failures. Good thing he did not let his negative impulses win. He was transported to the subspace where Eon appointed him as the new protector of the universe. After going through the rite of passage, he was transported back to the normal space and defeated Death Urge effortlessly. Eventually, Quasar gained back his confidence as he succeeded at Cosmic Task. Speaking of successes, let's talk about his strengths and his most extraordinary feats. Having pure quantum energy, Quasar can shift shift into any shape and explosively disperse his form. However, he can exhaust himself when he uses his powers way too much. The bonds allow him to manipulate the electromagnetic spectrum, he can notably use energy blasts and create solid light constructs, which can be permanent. However, 
direct control over these contracts can be taxing. Two contracts are the best amount he can use without losing control. Being a shield agent, he's also skilled at martial arts and using melee weapons, which he creates using his bonds. Not only that, but he was also deemed to be an Alpha Plus by the Galadorian Space Knight icon. Other Alpha Plus heroes are Norlin Rudd or Silver Surfer, Beta Ray Bill, Clark or Gladiator, and Ronan. These superheroes are also called the Annihilators. So what are his weaknesses or his failures? When the Ego Spore was contained within Quasar, he had limited contact with the Earth's surface. Quantum energy forms can't be protected against psionic, magical, and extra-dimensional energies such as Dark Force. They can be protected against telepathy though. So what are Quasar's greatest challenges? Quasar often battled or contributed to fighting cosmic events such as the Kree and the Shi'ar War, which threatened Earth as a bystander. In this war, the galaxies were battling each other and using Earth space as a hyperspace midway point, which then destabilized the Sun. There was also the possession of Infinity events like the Infinity War against Magus. In this event, Quasar attempted to use the ultimate nullifier, but it failed. It would have obliterated Quasar if not for further cosmic divine interventions. Quasar's troubles kept him away from Earth for a while, and his returns to the planet were short-lived. After Kyla Valentine, his assistant and girlfriend was permanently stranded in the new universe, he decided his role required more mobility. He bid farewell to his loved ones and made Ken run the business. Quasar then left Earth to focus on his duties as the protector. So that's a wrap on this episode of Quasar. Subscribe for more origin stories. This is Carl and see you in the next one.